name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That beautiful gathering song, the King is among us. And that's why we're here today, because Jesus, our King, is among us. And so I've had a really busy week. I'm sure you may well have done too. So I'd just like us to pause for a moment and to remember that he is among us, that God's presence is very much with us, that his Holy Spirit longs to anoint us and to open our hearts so that we may grow ever more to be like Jesus. So let's just pause for a moment in the presence of God. Amen. We join together now for our first hymn, Seek Ye First, the Kingdom of God. So with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. So as we come now to confess our sins in penitence and faith, let us firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together the Gloria. us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Through our faith, though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis Chapter 29, beginning at verse 15. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also, in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so, and completed her week. Then Laban gave, his, gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. Who doesn't like a good story? From an early age, we're surrounded by story, all shaping our understanding of life and the world, entertaining us as well as giving us hopes, dreams, even warnings. Now my father worked for British Rail and for holiday we would travel by train as far as we could as it was free, which often meant very long train journeys indeed. And my mother would entertain us with stories. She was a whiz at making them up about anything. One started with a piece of chewing gum that my brother got caught throwing out the window I'm not sure how he got it in the first place, because Mother hated it. Anyway, what a story she told about stop train, missed appointment, and missed wedding. It contained excitement, annoyance, sadness. We understood what was happening, and the message was clear in the end. Don't throw chewing gum out of the window. Now, Jesus was a masterman of stories. I wonder how many of his parables we could all name. If we were in church, we could have a go. So, just in a moment, think about if, how many you could name. I wonder if the Good Samaritan was the first one you thought of, or the sower from last week. Perhaps the fig tree, or the workers in the field. Well, apparently, according to my research, Luke had 24, Mark had 8, and Matthew, who we've been following for some weeks, has 23, 11 of which are only found in his Gospel. Whereas St. John may have none, or possibly five, depending on which information popped up on Google. So I hope you did include the parables we heard this morning from Matthew. These are certainly a storehouse filled with the mystery of God, as one author described parables. Here was Jesus preaching from a boat so that a large crowd that had gathered could hear his words spread out across the water, and all could hear. They are meant to be heard. The parables, including one about the weeds sown in the field that we heard last week, are called the kingdom parable. They are actually three pairs plus a single. So let's start with our first pair. What do they mean? The mustard seed is a very small seed indeed. And in this parable it grew and grew 
from a humble beginning. In fact, it grew so big that birds could perch on them. And like a good teacher, Jesus then retold the parable using a different symbol to get the message across. This time it was of the leaven or yeast mixture. It was common practice to save a little from the previous day to make that day's bread. Again, it grew in abundance to feed so much more than that single family. These are seen to be prophetic, showing the growth of the church from its humble, obscure beginning to the worldwide entity it is today. But there, are st there is a sting in both. The lovely image comes to mind of a mustard tree giving shelter to the birds of the field, but not so in the days of the Old Testament, where birds were often seen as the servants of evil. And at the holiest of times in the Jewish faith, all leaven must be completely removed from the house, so from being helpful it rep represented corruption. A warning for our original listeners and for us. Jesus certainly knew what mankind was like. He was not mincing his word. There would be seeds of corruption within. The next pair look towards the value of the kingdom. What would you do to buy the car of your dreams or your house or of that piece of art? Having found hidden treasure in the field, instead of just taking it, which at the time finders keepers was the norm, the seller sells everything to own it honestly, and more importantly, joyfully, to own that field and the treasure. Again, the pearl merchant looking for the best pearl, and when at last he finds it, he sells all just to buy one amazing pearl. The worth is beyond our imagination. He doesn't want to drag us screaming and kicking into the kingdom. No, he wants us to search with total commitment and with joy. But before we move on, what happens if instead of the finder, we are the treasure? Instead of the pearl merchant, we are the pearl. Then we, we are being actively sought in joy. We are held in such love that Jesus has already given all for us when he stretched out his arms and died on the cross for us. So what is our response now? What are we being called to do? What are we going to do as a church to find the kingdom and bring others to such a prize? As we move back into St Francis, we need to ask some hard questions of how to move forward to draw in the lost. And thinking on the final sentence, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is old and what is new. It does not mean throwing everything out, but looking for the pearls within and adding to them. Parables are certainly storehouse filled with the mystery of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Mary, for bringing God's word to us today. So we're going to join now to declare together our faith in God. We say together, we believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of, earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray. The response is, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of prayer and for the seeds of faith you have nurtured within us. We call to mind now our day-to-day -day world where we try to live out that faith, but often lose our way. We pray for all nations fighting the human and economic cost of the coronavirus. We pray that all leaders will take decisions for the common good and not for political point scoring. We pray for all medical and non-medical staff in hospitals care homes and local surgeries who are not only on the front line but also working hard behind the scenes to maintain health services for all. Lord hear us, Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for the dark and dangerous parts of our world where poverty, ill health and desperation often lead to people making difficult and dangerous choices to survive. We pray for all aid agencies seeking to raise standards of living and for our fellow Christians bringing hope and a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven to all who yearn for a better life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for your church and especially the Diocese of Oxford, for our bishops and all clergy. We pray for Reverend Jo, as she continues to lead us through this time of transition. Be with her, the church wardens and members of the PCC, as they prepare to hold the first service back within the walls of St Francis next Sunday. We pray for all our congregation watching at home. For all who may be joining us for the first time. And for all who cannot be with us online or in person. But whose lives at home we cherish and sustain with our prayers for their rest and well-being. They have given so much to our church over the years. And their presence and wisdom is missed and valued. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we lift to you all who are suffering at this time. Those who are up to their eyes in debt and cannot see a way out. Those whose addictions are leading them to dangerous choices. For all who are feeling overwhelmed by anxiety, and who dare not leave their houses. For all who dread the next argument or live in fear of a violent partner. We pray that help will come from unexpected sources, that your Holy Spirit will comfort and guide the decisions that need to be made, and that we may pay, play our part in answering the prayers of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. 
We pray for all whose earthly lives are coming to an end and for all who have died in recent days. We pray for all those caring for loved ones at this time or learning how to live without them. In a moment of quiet, we lift to you all who are on our hearts at this time. Loving Lord, when the road becomes rocky, walk with us, encourage us, and heal us with your loving embrace. Praying with St Francis and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christians throughout the world to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join together now for the peace. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to call to mind those whom you know and love to share the peace with them in your thoughts and hearts. As we come to celebrate Holy Communion this morning, we do so in memory of several folks that have died this week, uh, particularly Anne and Jackie, and we remember their families. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross and raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, 
grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
So let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love, for he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Amen. There's a couple of notices this week. Firstly, it's really joyful to think that on Sunday next week, we will, some of us, be able to gather once again at St Francis. When you arrive for that service, if you're able to join us at eight o'clock in the morning, things will be a little bit different to how they have been before. However, there will be some clear instructions for when you arrive there and I will guide you through that service as well. The service, um, now that it is set out with social distancing, we can take 17 people um, as individuals or up to 34 as couples. There will also be seating available for bubbles of up to five, um, and if need be, we can add more chairs to that bubble. So um, we have a various uh, different plans that we can have for depending on who turns up, whether it's individuals, couples or families. And that will apply also for the 10.30 service on Wednesday. We are now strongly advised by the bishops to wear face masks while we are for, together for gathered worship. I will be and those are preaching and helping to lead the services will also be. And you are strongly advised, if you are able to, to wear a face mask. This is so that we can, as that second commandment says, love our neighbour as ourselves. This is about looking after one another as much as ourselves. Um, and then there, so just to remind you of those service times, on Sunday from next week, there will be a Holy Communion said service at 8 a.m. in the morning, and then the church will remain open until 1 p.m. for private prayer. On Wednesdays, that communion service will happen at 10.30 a.m. and then the church will remain open for private prayer until 2 p.m. And then at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning, we will continue to stream live the service as we have been throughout lockdown. And that will continue until we can sing again together in church. Hopefully that won't be for too long and then we will be able to stream that service from church as well. Uh, yesterday I just want to say a huge thank you to all the Messy Church team. You did an amazing job, had lots of lovely comments from adults and children alike who really enjoyed being able to gather together online for Messy Church. And that will happen again at the end of the month in August on the fourth Saturday of the month. So look out for that. Oh, the last Saturday of the month. There might be five Saturdays in August, who knows? Um, and this is a final call for bunting. Um, as we go back into church, certain areas have to be cordoned off. I don't want that done with unwelcoming red tape. And so many of you have already returned the triangles that were sent out, which we're making some bunting with. Um, if I could have those back as soon as possible, either drop them through my door here at 51 Wellsbourne Crescent, Cassera CC, the name of the house, um, today or last thing tomorrow, um, or post them to the church office, put them into the post box there instead, because we need to get that bunting up and around as soon as possible. Finally, there will be Zoom coffee as usual at 11 o'clock after this service. If you'd like to join that, please message Sarah Pritchard. So we join together now for our closing hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim.
for worship this morning. Let's bow our heads and in a moment of quiet remember that we are in the presence of the living God. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.